All right, all right. It's a beautiful beach day. My name is Dan in the Sand, and today I'm going to take you on an adventure. How to, how to build a flat wall of sand. Now, that may sound kind of crazy, right? A flat wall of sand, what do you need that for? There are many things you can do with a flat wall of sand. And I'll actually scroll some pictures through here right now. So as you can see, this one, I made like a sea turtle with happy birthday inscription underneath. This is a heart. This is my most common wall of sand use. There are tons of different things you can do including this sculpture. Anything's really possible. There's no wrong way to take this flat wall of sand and turn it into whatever you wish. Back to what we're going to do. As you can see, I'm just on flat sand. This isn't very good for building a sand sculpture, is it? So what we're going to essentially do is we're going to make a big pile of sand. So just stick with me for a moment. We're going to make a big pile of sand and then I'm going to teach you what to do after that. So here we go. Big shovels always help here. Big pile of sand. Okay, as you can see, we got a nice big pile of sand here. So, there's another step we need to take before we can move on with our pile of sand. One very important thing I want you to notice. Do you see any holes? No, no, not a single hole, right? So I use a big flat-headed shovel and I cut at an angle. Now, I don't like to dig holes on our beach because holes can trap sea turtles. That's what a lot of people don't know. So it's very important that you don't dig any holes on a beach or if you do, please fill them back in. Because if a sea turtle comes up and it falls in a hole, it doesn't have the muscles to push itself backwards and it can actually suffocate and die in that hole. So it's very important to fill in all holes when you get down on the beach, okay? So you can see, no holes. So now I'm gonna continue on with my pile of sand. So it's just a loose, soft pile of sand. I don't like the way it looks right now. It's not very much like a wall. So I'm just gonna come in with my shovel. I'm gonna pack it down. Perfect. Let's give that a couple good taps. Then you can come back through with your shovel. Kind of cut it at a nice angle. Make it nice and smooth. This is where the flathead shovel really comes into play. You could also use like a big piece of wood. Really anything's possible here. You could even use a string, right? You could grab a string in your two hands and hold it across and pull it down. So there's no wrong way to make this flat. One thing I do want to show you so you can see this. Let me show you the angle, right? It's not straight up and down. That's very important, okay? You don't want it to be straight up and down, right? Because that sand may not stay up there. It'll keep wanting to fall down. So you want a nice little mellow angle. All right, so now we're gonna go back into what I'm going to do next. All right, so here we go. Now I'm gonna move on to the next step. You see I've dug a little trench right here? That's a good thing. You want there to be a little trench. Now you need a bucket. A big bucket, the bigger the better here. See, I have five gallon bucket and you want it about halfway full of water. Once you have your bucket full of water, you'll take your shovel and you can use a smaller shovel at this point. So you can either use a smaller shovel or a bucket. I'm gonna use a bucket. Let me move this out of your way. There we go. Bucket, dry sand, add it to the water. Now we're gonna pretty much fill this up about an inch from the top with dry sand, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that. All right, now that we've had our dry sand mixed with our water, you can see how there's water above our sand, right? We got about three inches of water above our wet sand. So now what we're going to do is stack this wet sand up on the face of this pile. First thing you need to do, water. Water is essentially glue when it comes to sand castles. It makes the sand stick. So we're gonna water first, and that's gonna give us a nice wet base to work off of. Now I'm gonna take my hands, and I'm gonna put them together like a shovel and I'm gonna push down the back of the bucket to about my wrists. See, I'm about at my wrists and now I'm gonna come across to the front. My hands are straight up and down and I'm gonna scoop like a shovel and you get this big handful of sand and then you're gonna put it down and you're gonna wiggle and pat it. Now you're only gonna pat it for like five seconds. You hear how it's not wet anymore? You're gonna stop patting and you're gonna move on to your next handful. Another handful, put it down, wiggle, pat. No longer wet, move on to the next sample. Now you're gonna go through a lot of wet sand in this process. I know it don't look like much right now, it's all lumpy and frumpy and bumpy, but I'm gonna come back with my tools and I'm gonna carve this into a perfectly flat wall of sand. 
So hang in there just one second and watch this transform into a perfect flat wall sand. Now here is where the artistic hand does kind of come into play. Because if you don't have a steady hand, you can mess this up. And if you cut too deep, you're going to go through your flat wall of sand and run into this dry sand behind it, defeating the purpose of the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my tools. So beautiful. I mean, look how gorgeous it is. It's such a beautiful view today. All right, all right, look it. You see what this is? It's just a burger turner. That's what I call it, right? Burger turner. So yes, big spatula. So I essentially use my spatula to just come and cut this nice and flat. Now I'm barely taking off any sand at a time, taking off like a quarter to a half of an inch at a time, right? So I'm just barely slicing through that wet sand we stacked up here to reveal a nice solid wall of sand underneath it. And you can just slowly see the imperfection. You can come over that imperfection until it disappears. And you just slowly work this down. I'm just going to continue cutting straight across with my spatula, taking off a little bit of sand at a time, right? So I'll come up above it, cut off a little bit, and then slowly trim back to that nice flat sand. All right. And you're just working this all the way across to reveal a nice flat wall of sand. Okay, so now I got it all cut flat, right? Imperfection. Imperfection. Oh, you shall not pass. <laughs> no. So if you don't like your imperfection and you don't want to go lower, there is a solution to this because it is just sand, remember? So all you need is a little water. That's what I have here, a cup full of water and your bucket of wet sand, right? And when you take a handful of wet sand like this, and you just splash water up here and you pull your hand up like that. Look it, you fill in that imperfection. And then you just splash and pull. Ta-da! So water is glue. It's a magic ingredient for your sandcastle. So don't be ever scared to use too much water. There's no such thing as too much water in a sandcastle. Now, seriously, water is like glue. It really helps the sand bind together through surface tension. So now you can see we've created a huge mess. So that's one thing you always need to remember. When you repair with water, you're gonna create a huge mess. So keep that in mind. So if I had any details down here, gone, destroyed, right? I would have to redo all of that detail. So I used to always say sandcastles are like haircuts. Once you take it off, you can't put it back on, right? Say that to a little kid, I guarantee they'll laugh. They'll be like, oh yeah, you can't put it back on. Bubble gum, right? <laughs> All right, so now we got our wall constructed, right? I've cut it all smooth. I've fixed all of our damages that we created. So now you can come up with something as simple as a brush. The bristles are very important here. Different bristles give you a different texture. <laughs> Don't ask me what bristle brush this is. <laughs> And you can see, just by running a brush over it, makes it nice and smooth. Ta-da! So now, 
I'm going to move on and teach you how I would turn this into a perfect sand heart. Hopefully I will permanently link that video at the end of this video. So if you want to tune in for that, just wait for the end of this video. You can click on that link or feel free to go through and find it. So what I'm essentially going to do is transform this into a perfect heart of sand. So this is how I build a flat wall of sand. You can transform this literally into anything, okay? So your imagination is the limit here. So I hope you guys tune in for the next one, and I'll see you next time. Beautiful beach day, am I right? Thank you.